invited to Ozark Full Gospel Church, located in Ozark, Missouri, where we are touching the Ozark with Jesus Christ. Sit back, enjoy, as Pastor James Aiken brings forth God's exciting word. Place my feet on a rock to sand. You place my feet on a rock to stand. You worked it all out. You worked it all out. You worked. Place my feet on the rock to stand. You place my feet on the rock to stand. You worked it all out. You worked it all out. You worked it. And you are worthy, you're so worthy, you are holy and righteous, you are worthy, you're so worthy. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, my King and my Savior, your King and your Savior. my feet I'm the rock to stand you place my feet on the rock to stand you worked it all out you worked it all out you worked it all out Lord for my good and we celebrate you Jesus Christ, our shield, our fortress, our healer, our savior, and we love you.
Amen. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have four exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11 a.m., Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful preaching at every service. And we never close for any reason. We look forward to seeing you soon right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Brother Aikens, and I'd like to share with you something incredible. You know, this year has been a very strange year. And because of that, we are going to celebrate Easter in July. July the 12th, next Sunday, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're going to have dinner on the grounds after the 11 o'clock service, and then an Easter egg hunt for all the children. Come out, be blessed. And let's celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have our pastor, my mom and dad, back in the house with us. Amen. We missed them while they was gone. Amen. I have a message that the Lord laid on my heart. Uh, actually, a few weeks ago, he started uh, laying this message on my heart and uh, and I believe it's what he would have me to bring tonight. And so I want to get right into the Word of God. Uh, you can be finding in your Bible Psalm chapter 93. Psalm chapter 93. And uh, we'll be reading that entire chapter. There are 147 ver I'm just kidding. There's just five, five verses there. When you find that, you can stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 93. Uh, verses 1 through 5, and then I want to bring out just a couple verses out of that psalm. And this is what it says. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he has girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up. O oh Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O oh Lord, forever. Now I want to draw your attention uh, particularly to verses 3 and 4, and I'm going to read those again. It says, The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves, but listen, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. I've titled tonight's message, a phrase taken out of verse 4, the Lord is mightier than the noise. You may be seated. The Lord is mightier than the noise. Now, when we look at this uh, psalm, it is looking forward, I believe, to the millennial reign of Christ. It talks about the Lord reigneth and the kingdom is established. It is looking forward to that, but it also speaks of a time when the nations and the people will rage against the Lord. And, and we, uh, I believe that we see even a measure of this today in the day that we live as we're coming nearer to those times. That, and so I want to kind of focus on the floods. And, and of course we know in the last days that, the, that all the world will come against the Lord Jesus Christ, but that's not going to work out very well for them in the end. Uh, of course we know the Lord will take care of them. But I I want to talk about the floods, the floods, and, and uh, now the strength of flood waters can be overwhelming. If you've ever looked and seen videos or been part, you can see that the floods of water can be quite overwhelming. The, the power uh, of a flood is really, it seems, without limit. Uh, the destruction that can be caused by a flood is, is overwhelming. It can, it can be mind-numbing. And all that's left in its path often is just 
simply just destruction. Uh, even, uh, even the sound of many waters can be deafening. If you've ever stood beside a, a waterfall of some sort or beside a river that was moving very fast, the noise of that is almost deafening. If you stand beside just a dam at a river or something and try to talk to somebody, you almost have to be right up in their ear in order for them to hear. And so the, this passage in Psalms I believe, it, I believe that we can draw some application from the day that we live. And, and so we know that the floods are very powerful. And we know even if, if you've ever walked through a river and you felt uh, through a current and you just felt that pushing against you. You know a flood can be very strong and many waters gathered together can be very, very strong. And, and sometimes it, it's unstoppable it seems. But uh, I want to kind of develop this, uh, this thought tonight. Uh, as we look at the landscape of our world as it is right now and some things that are going on around us. Um, <clears throat> now, I want to uh, first of all say that I believe that there is a tide of evil that is rising. And by that, I mean that there are forces of darkness that are uniting for a common purpose. There, there are forces of evil that are coming together in the day that we live, and they're uniting on all sorts of common grounds of evil, such as uh, immorality and homosexuality and abortion. Uh, there are many things that uh, people are, are uniting around. The idea of, of, uh, of uh, a marriage is no longer between a man and a woman. There are so many things that, that there, are, there are masses of people that are uniting around these ideas and all sorts of immorality and things uh, that are going on today. And it's really, uh, I believe, even coming to the point of like it was in the book of Judges where every man is doing whatever seems right in their own eyes. I believe that that is the time that we're approaching now. Uh, that third verse of Psalm 93, it says, the floods have lifted up, O Lord. And I believe that there is a flood of this uh, evil that is trying to rise up even in this nation that is going to try to push for us to abandon the things of God. They want to abandon our Christian heritage. They want to abandon our roots. They want to push against all those things. They are coming together for that purpose. They want to come against all that is righteous. I'm reminded of what it says in Psalm 2 verses 1 through 3. It says, Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. There are many in the world that we live in today that desire to break away from all those things that would uh, condemn the lifestyles that they're living. They want to break away from the truth. They want to break away from God's conviction. They want to break away from the voice of truth. They want to join together and do whatever they can to rise up against the voice of truth that would condemn the things that they are doing. And they want to cast off the things that God would desire to do. They want to cast off the things of the Lord. They want to cast these things away from them. They no longer want to be bound by them. There is a push, I believe, going on even in this nation for that. I want you to know also, uh, I want to read a portion of 2 Timothy uh, chapters uh, 3, verses 1 through 5. Listen to what it says. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, I believe that there are several things in there that you could say that we do see today in the world that we live. There are people that despise those things that are good. They don't want anything to do with those things that are good. They are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And it's clear, I believe, that we are living in the last days. How many would agree that we are living in the last days? If you don't believe that, I would remind you that the apostles were looking for the return of Christ in their day to 2,000 years ago. I would remind you that the Apostle Paul was expecting the Lord Jesus Christ to come back. The others uh, talked about the fact that the return of the Lord was imminent. So if they were talking about the last days then, how much more are we in the last days now? Amen? 
But there are so many, there are so many people that are desiring to cast off these things. There are people that are calling what is good evil and evil good. Have you ever, have you ever stopped to notice that that's going on in the nation today? When you think about the, th- the people that are committing abortions that are, that are pushing for that, they're saying that this is good. You ought to be able to take a child's life in the womb. They're saying this is good. That's not evil. They're saying this is good. You ought to be able to do that. They're saying that marriage is no longer between one man and, and one woman as God has purposed it to be they're saying oh you can just do whatever feels right in your own self and that is good and I'm telling you that that is not good it's people calling evil good and good evil and that is the day that we live in today I believe that that's happening even now in this nation. Now, I will say with that, there are a great many of godly people who are rising up to push against this as well. That there are many people that are fighting against this tide of evil that's going on in the nation. And I believe with all my heart that God has given us a window of opportunity, a window of grace that we can preach the gospel, that we can share the gospel. We are virtually unhindered to do that in this country. There are many places around the world where you can not do that but God has given us a space of grace I believe a time where he's going to allow us to do that and it's up to us what we're going to do with that window of opportunity that he's given us amen I believe that God has given us a window of opportunity because in the process of time even in this nation the great nation that we are those freedoms could be taken away from us They could be taken away from us. There are many uh, great things that America has done, but a lot of the blessings, I believe, are fruits from our roots. And the problem with those is most of them are under the ground, is what one old preacher said. Most of the roots are under the ground. But there are things that, that we can do, I believe, in this nation. We can begin to work against that flood of evil that's trying to rise up. I believe that we can be a light in a dark world. I believe that the Holy Spirit in us, that we can go out and begin to shine the light of the gospel in a world that is dark and without hope and without God. I believe that we can come together as the people of God and begin to push against those things. The enemy is uniting. Why don't the church of Jesus Christ unite to push against the evils of this world to push against these people that are fighting against the truth of God's word why won't we come together as God's people and begin to push back against the powers of darkness I want to be one of those in the last day that lets my light so shine before men that I can bring glory to my God I want him to know that there's still a God on the throne amen amen We're looking at a nation that's degrading in morals. Of course, we talk about the abortion that was legalized a long time ago when, uh, when marriage was no longer defined between a man and a woman as God uh, had ordained it and God had set into place. The president at the time had lit the White House in rainbow colors celebrating what God calls an abomination. You know, you, you remember those things. You remember that New York had passed that barbaric law within the last year or so that allowed essentially anybody to perform an abortion right up to the moment the child is being born. You think about the the fact that after that was passed at the governor, remember he lit the needle of the One World Trade Center in pink to celebrate that. To celebrate the passage of that law. And actually, I believe just yesterday, the Senate had had uh, voted down a law that would require them to give uh, medical care to the child that was born after a botched, a, a botched abortion. Laying on the table alive, and they said, well, we don't think we should protect that life. That was just yesterday. Just yesterday. You think about all of those things. You think about... The dismemberment abortions and all those things. It's horrendous in the sight of God. There's a discussion that they can be aborted even after they're born. And it just doesn't get any more sick than that in my mind, I don't believe. And I believe that that is something that God sees is is awful. And so with that, I say that there is a flood of unrighteousness that is rising, I believe, even in this land. There's a flood that is lifting itself up. They've, they've made void God's law. That's what it says in Psalm 119, verse 126. Or 126. It says, It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. They've made void thy law. Now, I want to say also 
along this, uh, this line is that the, not only is the tide of evil rising, the forces of darkness, they unite, but also the voice of evil is speaking. Look again at Psalm 93.3 where we, we read earlier. It says, The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their what? Their voice. The floods have lifted up their voice. So not only are they uniting, they're coming together, but they now begin to speak. Uh, they now begin to speak against all those that hold to the truth of God's word. And there are many voices speaking in the world today. Did you know there are many voices speaking in the world today? I want to point out just a few of those that I believe that we are seeing a lot in the, in the environment that we live. I believe that there is the voice of deception and lies. The voice of deception and lies, as the serpent did in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis 3.1, listen to what it says. Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? See, what he was doing, the devil wanted to put a question mark around what God had said. He wanted to put a question mark around what God had said. And there are many people today who are desiring to take what God says and they want to put a question mark around it. They want to say, has God said? They want to say, are you sure that's what God has said? And not only that, but they want to say, well, what God has said isn't what God has meant. Okay, so God said it, but that isn't what he meant. And that's the voice that we're hearing today. They're saying, well, I'm fine with what the Bible says. And sure, it says those words and everything. But when God said that, let me tell, what, let me tell you what he really meant. That's the voice. That's the voice of the flood. That's the voice of the flood that is rising up. That's a voice of deception and lies that's coming into this nation today. They want to take the word of God. And you know what that is? That's called taking the word of God. It's called changing the truth of God and making it a lie. They're turning the truth of God into a lie. And so there's the voice of deception and lies saying, Yes, I'm fine with you reading the Bible, but come here and let me give you the proper interpretation of that. Let me tell you what it really says. But I want you to know that what God has said is what God does mean. And what it says in the word of God is what it means. What it says in black and white doesn't need to be twisted around. You take it for what it is. You preach the word of God as it is to men and women as they are. Amen? That's what it's talking about. There's a, there's a flood that is rising up and there's voices that begin to speak. And one of those voices is to say, God's word, let's just to make sure that you understand that. Let's put a question around it. That's the voice of the devil speaking to people. In verses, uh, and, and I, want you to, I want you to know that when the deception, they, they come with the deception and then comes the lie. So I want you to listen to what verses 2 and 3 of Genesis chapter 3 says. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. It was clear what God said. She knew what God said. Uh, but there was a voice that came to her that brought a question. There was a voice that came and said, Has God said? And then when the question came, then came the lie. In verse 4 of Genesis chapter 3 it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. But the moment that they sinned against God, and they ate of that fruit, they did die. They spiritually died exactly as God said, and I want you to know what God says. God means. There's no point in trying to take the scriptures, trying to twist it to our own idea of what we think it ought to say. When God says it, that's what it says. Now, I want to, I want to bring out another voice that I believe that we're hearing today. You see, uh, in our original text verse, uh, verse 3 of Psalm 93, The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. And there's the voice of fear and intimidation. The voice of fear and intimidation. 
Remember what I said earlier as the sound of rushing waters is. They desire to speak at such a volume to silence and drown out all of the people who are speaking the truth of God's word. And they desire to do that with fear and intimidation. They want to come out and they seek to desire, uh, they desire to drown out the voice of truth. You know, if you hold to the word of God in the day that we live in, you're going to be labeled intolerant. You're going to be labeled a, a hater. You're going to be mocked. You're going to be laughed at. They're going to try to silence you. And they're going to try to do that through fear and intimidation. If you think about Goliath, the enemy gathered together. And they all gathered together and they would send out their champion, Goliath. Who would come out and he would say, you will serve us. They would send their champion out. You will serve us. Send me a man. And he brought fear into the entire camp. There was a voice shouting in the valley saying, You're going to serve us. And the enemy tonight seeks to control you and control me through fear and intimidation. But I want you to know that our God is mightier than the noise. Amen? That's just a bunch of noise when the Goliath is out there in the valley. You know why? Because God sent us the shepherd that came and defeated every enemy on the cross of Calvary. Amen? But there's the voice of fear and intimidation. And they say, you will serve us. You cannot defeat us. And they come out and they gather together and they send out their champions. And you hear them on TV. And you hear them on the radio. You hear them everywhere else. And they're saying, you will serve us. We're going to drown you out. We're not going to let you speak. We're going to overpower you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. The floods have lifted up. And they've lifted up their voice. Now I want you to notice the next portion. The flood of evil is coming against God's people. Look again at verse 3 of Psalm 93. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. Now look. The floods lift up their waves. So I want you to notice the progression in this. The floods of darkness, they rise and they unite. And then they speak, and then eventually they will act. They set it into motion. You've seen at the beach, the waves come in and they crash upon the seashore. And so they set those in the directions that they're going, and the waves come. And so I want you to know that though the flood of evil is coming against God's people, and though it is speaking, and there's fear and intimidation, and there's lies and deception, that no matter what happens, we must not bow to this world. Which brings me to Daniel chapter 3. And you can go there with me. Daniel chapter 3, you know the story. Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold and he set it up in the plain of Dura and he gathered all his rulers and the people together and he commanded, you know what, when the music plays that you fall down and worship the golden image and whoever would not bow would be cast into the fiery furnace and there were three who would not bow. There were three who would not bow. And it was brought to the king's attention Look at what it says in Daniel chapter 3, verse 12. It says, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want you to know that these men were singled out. Everyone else simply followed the mandate of the day. Everyone else simply followed uh, what, the, uh, what the rule, what the law that came down. Everyone else just simply followed along. But there were these who were singled out. They did not worship their gods. They did, not, they did not bow. And you know what? They held to their conviction even in the face of fear and intimidation and loss of life. 
even in fear and intimidation and in loss of life. Now, I want you to know that that's something that also we could face someday here. That that is something that we could face where eventually our freedoms are taken away from us. Eventually, uh, things begin to change and they're going to say, you're going to have to bow. Or we're going to act. It's happening in other places. You're going to have to bow and you're going to have to act. Now, I want you to know with that, that there is a refusal to bow. It's going to make you a target. It's going to make you a target. Listen to what it says in Daniel 3.13. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. There will come a day where refusal to follow after the world system will bring you to a place where you will be singled out. They will not tolerate your stand for Christ. They will not put up with it. And you may be brought before something of this nature. You may be brought before the fiery furnace. And so they were brought before the king. And the king gave him another chance. He said, if you're going to bow, it'll be all right for you. If you'll bow down and simply worship when you hear the music, it'll be all right for you. And he said, if not, who is the God that's going to deliver you out of my hand? And I want you to know that there was that was a pretty dumb thing to say for Nebuchadnezzar because there was a God in heaven that was going to take care of this problem that he thought he was going to bring on. You know why? Because the Lord is mightier than the noise. When Nebuchadnezzar started talking and saying, I'm going to take you guys and I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace and there ain't nothing that you can do about it. I want you to know that that was just a bunch of noise. The Lord is mightier than the noise. When they begin to say, we're going to take you, we're going to round you up, we're going to bind you, we're going to throw you into the fire it's all a bunch of noise amen. Amen. amen the Lord is mightier than the noise the Lord is mightier than the waves of the sea that's our God that we serve though the voice of evil is shouting at you saying you will bow to us we don't have to do it because our God is on the throne we don't have to bow when the world says you will bow we don't have to bow in the face of threats and intimidation and loss of life you know why because it's all a bunch of noise amen it's all a bunch of noise. Look at what it says in uh, Daniel 3.16. Listen to their answer. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. <laughs> we're not careful to answer you about this. We're not going to beat around the bush about this. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to try to be the best... Christian politician we can be about this we're not going to give you an answer that sounds good enough that you might go along with it there's a lot of places around this world where there's a lot of Christian politicians that say well let me just give you a soft answer that sounds good enough to where you can guess which way one way or another maybe we're thinking they said we're not careful to answer you in this we're not we're not going to make you wonder how we feel about this we're just going to tell you outright, this is how we feel about this. This is how we feel about this. And so I want to say to us that no matter the flood that lifts up, no matter the voices that are coming out of that flood, we need to stand solid on the rock of Christ Jesus. We need to take our stand and stand there. Listen to verse 17 of Daniel 3. It says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Do you know that God is able to deliver us? Did you know that God is able to do anything? Did you know that there is no limit to his power? Did you know that there is nothing too hard for God? But even if he doesn't. A lot of people want to leave that part out. But even if he doesn't deliver us from the floods that come against us, what? We still stand firm. And that's what they said too in verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want you to know, he can deliver us if he wants, 
But if he chooses not to, what's our answer? We will not bow. Amen. Amen. God is able to deliver his people, and you know, that made Nebuchadnezzar really mad. That made him really mad. That made him seven times madder than he was because he had him light that furnace up seven times hotter. He was fuming. I don't know who was smoking more, him or the furnace. He was angry. He was furious. And so he binds him and he throws him into the fire. But it wasn't long that he said, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? It wasn't long that he started looking in there and saying, something doesn't add up. I thought I was better at counting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I thought we only put three in there. But I'm seeing four. Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. And he looked out there and you know what? It was all a bunch of noise because Jesus showed up. He threw them into the furnace. He bound them. He threw them in there. And it didn't matter because it was all a bunch of noise. It was just a bunch of noise. And Jesus showed up. And they their fire had no power over them. They didn't even have the smell of smoke on them when they come out. Not even a hair on their head was singed. They come out and they come out victorious. You know why? Because it was all a bunch of noise. Amen. Amen. It was all a bunch of noise. When the floods lift up their voice, it doesn't matter how loud. It doesn't matter how frightening. It doesn't matter what it is. The Lord is mightier than the noise. It's all a bunch of noise. It doesn't matter when the enemy speaks deception and lies. We've got the truth of God's word to combat those lies. And you know what? It's all a bunch of noise. You know when the Goliath is in the valley shouting at you saying you're going to serve us. It don't matter because our shepherd has come and he is defeated every Goliath every enemy he went to the cross of Calvary and you know what that means for us it's all a bunch of noise it's all a bunch of noise that's our God that we serve when a Nebuchadnezzar comes in with rage and fury and he gives a command throw him in the furnace the fire has no power over us because our God is with us and it's all a bunch of noise our God is mightier than the noise. Our God is mightier than the waves of the sea. It doesn't matter if they lift up. They can lift up. They can start talking. But our God is mightier than the noise. Amen. Let the waters rage on. Let the floods lift themselves up. Let the floods lift up their voice. It don't matter. Our God is mightier than the noise. Amen. I like that. I like that. Our God is mightier than the noise, and he's mightier than the waves of the sea. So amazing, our God. Coming to the end of the message here. We have a standard. We have a standard. You remember what it says in Isaiah 59, 19? It says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood... The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I want you to know the Lord Jesus Christ is our standard. He is our standard. There is no fury. There is no flood. There is no fire of hell that can overcome our standard. See, our standard was lifted up on the cross of Calvary. He was lifted up and he defeated every single enemy. He shed his blood so that our sins could be washed away. He shed his blood and defeated sin and death. He rose again from the grave. And all those that would come to him, he'll give everlasting life. He'll cleanse you and make you free and make you pure and wash you in his precious blood so that you can walk victorious every day. And when the floods start lifting up around you, when the floods start lifting up their voices around you, when the 
the waves start coming to crash upon you, you know what you can say? The Lord is mightier than the noise. And the Spirit of the Lord has lifted up a standard, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and He's living in our heart, and it doesn't matter what comes our way, our standard will never give out. Amen. Amen. The Lord is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. And I love the fact that even though there are so many voices and they're so loud today, there's one voice that's louder than all of them. There's one voice that's louder than all of them that they will never, ever be able to drown out. All the voices of the world combined will never, ever be able to drown out this one voice. That's the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. The voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, His voice can calm any storm. His voice can still any raging sea. His voice can never, ever be silenced and never be drowned out. doesn't matter how big the flood is. There is a day coming where all the nations of the world are going to come against Jesus Christ when He returns. And he's going to go to battle, and they're all going to be devoured. It's just a bunch of noise. He's going to devour them by his word of his power. And all of them are going to be destroyed just like that. Because the Lord is mightier than the noise. His voice can't be drowned out. So we get ready to give an invitation. The last point of the message I want to say is that we have a hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ. No matter what we face, He's our refuge. He is our anchor in the midst of a flood. Hebrews 6, 19 says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Jesus Christ has accomplished everything that we need. He's done everything for us. He's done all that we could possibly ever need in this life so that we can walk victoriously. There may be some struggles that you're dealing with around you tonight, people around you. It doesn't have to be at the national level. There are floods that come in our life. There are floods of all sorts of nonsense that rise up in our lives, and there are voices that begin to whisper to you, to try to bring you down, to try to destroy you, saying you're worthless, you'll never get better, you'll never overcome, you're a, you're a worthless example of a Christian, God can never use you, God doesn't want to have anything to do with you, you know what that is? You probably guessed it, it's a bunch of noise. So when those voices come, maybe you need to take just a moment, remember Psalm 93. The Lord is mightier than the noise. Mightier than those waves that crash against you. And He's our standard and He's our hope. And He's our anchor that will keep us sure in the floods of life that we face. Stand with me tonight. We'll give an invitation. If you have a need, you can bring it to the altars tonight. We always give an invitation every service. These altars are open for you.
At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have four exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11 a.m., Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful preaching at every service. And we never close for any reason. We look forward to seeing you soon right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Brother Aikens, and I'd like to share with you something incredible. You know, this year has been a very strange year. And because of that, we are going to celebrate Easter in July. July the 12th, next Sunday, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're going to have dinner on the grounds after the 11 o'clock service, and then an Easter egg hunt for all the children. Come out, be blessed. And let's celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. You know the wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the King when He comes. When we shall see the King. We shall see the King, we shall see the King when He comes. You know He's coming in power, we'll heal the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done and go away? You know my home is for the pure. Life can never stay. We shall see the king when he comes. That's right. Oh, and we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. You know he's coming in power. We'll heal the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King and Lord of all You know the kingdom of this world Shall soon be for him fall We shall see the King when he comes Sing away When we shall see the King We shall see the King We shall see the King when he comes You know he's coming in power We'll heal the blessed hour we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, my brother. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King and Lord of all. You know the kingdom of this world shall soon before him fall. We shall see the king when he comes. Amen. Oh, and we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the King when He comes. You know it's coming in power. We'll heal the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. One more time. Oh, and we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. You know it's coming in power. We'll heal the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Amen. Yes, that's. Well, I'm looking for the blessed hope. Jesus is going to take us out of this mess one of these days. Praise God. I'm thankful today, Chuck. There's hope. There's always hope when you know Jesus. Amen. And He's your Savior. No more poverty. No more pain or sickness or disease or heartache or disappointment, broken dreams and none of those things. But those things are going to pass away. And everything that we ever hoped for, dreamed of, desired in our heart to be able to serve Jesus and to love him, to be with him forever. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that day. 
If the sun doesn't shine This life of mine I still love you And if all that I see Be shattered dreams I still love you If all that I know This world below Heartache and sorrow If I live my life, sickness and pain, I still love you. If I go through this world without earthly gain, I still love you. Oh, Jesus said, when I saw you in sin, I took you in, I still loved you. And when you stumble and fall through, I went away, I still love you. But I'm coming back some glorious day, I still love you. And I'll take you home, just you wait and see. Surrive 
I run to you, none but you, Lord, none but you, I'll cast my cares on you. Trust in you, Lord, in none but you. Is the Lord Jesus Christ your strong tower? Is he your rock, your ever-present help in time of need? Praise God, he is so, so good to us. Thank you, Lord. When night has come and day is gone, or you descend with trumpet sound, I'll take my flight to worlds above At home with you, Lord, at home with you Home with you, Lord, home with you Free from all cares at home with you Home with you, Lord, home with you at last with you, Lord, at home with you. Sing that with me. Home with you, Lord, home with you, free from all cares, at home with you. Home with you, Lord, home with you, at last with you, Lord, at home with you. At last with you, Hi, I'm Pastor James Akins of the Ozark Full Gospel Church. And I'm Josh Akins, the Associate Pastor. And we would like to invite you to come out and be a part of some of our wonderful services. Our church is located at 3081 Selmar Road, right here in Ozark, Missouri. Every Sunday morning we have two services, one at 9.30 and the other at 11 o'clock. We also have Sunday night service at 6 o'clock and midweek service on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. All of our services last about an hour, and at every service you will expect to hear uh, dynamic gospel singing and powerful preaching out of the Word of God. We have something for all ages at every service, so we look forward to seeing you and your entire family here at Ozark Full Gospel Church. Where we're touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. <laughs> 